nobody here for general information. And we have no public hearing scheduled. So you guys want to play Scrabble? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I did send around some odds and ends. Um, and I, I'm just for information, no action required. Uh, this afternoon, I sent out a case from the uh, ZBA of Wellesley, uh, decided in, in 2002, which basically says that if you got approved on a comprehensive permit, you uh, cannot convert to market rate yeah. it, unless the underlying zoning permits multifamily. Right. Um, right. So for how did you find that? How did you find that one? That was a good uh, yeah. Town council found it. Oh, that's town right. council that's found it. Saw, right, town found it. Yeah, and um, I mean, Bill's good, but he's not that good. Yeah, not I, that I just good. I had never heard of it. In fact, I had in, I had discussed it informally with prior town council, who said that yeah, they probably can convert to um, market rate. So, uh, well, it's interesting that it was in Wellesley. You know, clearly, uh, they probably didn't want to add any more affordable housing in town, given that it was Wellesley. Well, and they so they kept what they had already. And yeah. uh, the apparently the developer who bought the project it was not the the owner of the project was not the developer. The developer went bankrupt and the owner bought it at a bankruptcy auction with the intention of converting it to market rate as soon as the um, uh, restriction expired for affordability. And uh, was apparently very disappointed. <laughs> well, it looks like Mountain View has just sold a couple of weeks ago for 27 million. Oh well, I wonder if they read that. Uh, no, but this this could be a uh, you know this this could be I don't want to overstate it could be sort of a game changer on this expiring uh, uh, on the the expiring Chapter Forty A affordability. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have about a year to go on Mountain View and ten years to go on uh, Winfield, so. A lot can happen in that time. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the legislature could do some fancy trick, tricks on us. And as also, as we're going through the housing development plan and talking about, you know, is there a place for multifamily uh, units? We just want to be mindful that we don't uh, inadvertently rezone something that will let a 40B off the hook. Absolutely. So, uh, so if and when they can we talk about strategies or not? No, I wouldn't. At this no. point, we don't have. First of all, it's not on the agenda. It's just for information. We're not going to yeah. take any action, yeah. and there's really nothing before. Well, let's suppose us. someone someone came before our municipality and said that they wanted to convert, and we point this point this uh, decision out in Wellesley. And we said we we can't do it because of this decision. Do they sue us? Um, it's a decision of the Supreme Judicial Court, so that's yeah. been decided by the highest court in Massachusetts. Yeah. So uh, can they sue us? Sure, yeah, if they want sure. to waste their sure. money. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, they Bill, do we know if the Wellesley? Do Do we know if that was a friendly? 40B? No, it wasn't when it first came in. Okay. In, in fact, that was part of what the uh, the note that the court made that um, the benefit of having a 35 unit apartment building in Wellesley uh, was the was only available to the applicant because they did a 40B. Right. And uh, Wellesley appealed it initially and lost uh, at the uh, uh, Housing Appeals Board uh, because they were under their, uh, their percentage. 
And um, I think they wanted to, to keep as much as they could. Now, I haven't updated it to see if there is any, have been any significant changes since then, but I do think it's uh, pretty straightforward. So I wonder, I wonder if Lisa thinks that the SJC would go the same way if the town agreed, you know, if it was a friendly 40B. So every, everybody at the table expected it to convert to market rate after X number of years, would they still hold that position? Uh, I think they probably would be, unless the underlying zoning changes. But um, okay. in in the 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 one on the horizon, uh, the, the friendly forty B, they they are making a commitment to keep it uh, affordable in perpetuity. So that won't be an issue. Yeah, going virtually, forward. virtually all of the projects in the last. The, the last number that have all been come forward have all been in perpetuity. Only the first couple were had a, had a time limit on them. And I think the difference is the new ones are being brought forward by not-for-profits in the housing, in the affordable housing business, so to speak. Right. Okay. As the uh, ones like Winfield were brought in by for-profit developers who were... Uh, maybe hoping that they would be able to turn it around one day into market rate. So, um, and let's see. Um, I also sent around last week um, a, um, our last meeting, we didn't get to talk about it. And I don't know is that we need to talk about it particularly, but uh, just a spreadsheet showing the uh, contributions that the excise taxes have made, uh, rooms tax, meals tax, and marijuana tax. Um, when uh, Linda and I were first talking about it, we had no idea how significant the impact of those taxes had been. Um, so Especially on a per cap, you know, we lag behind Northampton in dollar terms, but in per capita terms, I was going to go through just see how much it was per capita. I think we're going to be significantly ahead of them. Linda did uh, an analysis of the percent of our budget that the excise taxes represent versus the percent of the Amherst budget or the Northampton budget. And it's, uh, it's healthy. Uh, I don't know, Tom, I, I don't think you've seen it. Let me just see if I can uh, grab it quickly here. Well, let me go around and get it up first. Uh. While you're finding that, I will just mention that when I pull it off the scanner, I'm gonna send out to all of you, uh, I scanned the article in this month's Western Mass AIA about the affordable housing project that they did up in Sunderland, which was uh, really nicely described. Um, so that's that's the one that still has some problems uh, with the sewer. Uh, it's like a big red barn back. I think it's back behind the correct the uh, blue heron. Yeah. Oh no, that that one. Uh, I was I I was talking about the one that's more towards Route sixty three. Uh, this one is uh, I think it's something like one twenty or one fifty uh, North Main Street, and I thought it was I thought it was toward the center of town. Well, there is there is some there's some land available in the center of town. So is it built already or are yeah they yeah. How many units did you? Uh, 33, and they had to keep the original house in the front. It was an L-shaped lot that went back, but the problem was the back part where, the, where they had more space. Correct. Half, half of it was wetlands, so. Okay, and I know the town uh, 
initially when they voted at the town meeting for affordable housing, it was about seven or eight units and uh, there was no biting on it. So I was wondering if this came in under a 40 B. Probably yeah, did. it's, it's, it's a good story. I'll, I'll send it to you all so you can read how the town worked with um, several organizations to and Valley CDC was at, at the heart of it. Well, Sunderland only had 1% 40B housing a few years ago, so they were extremely vulnerable. Right, right. So this is, that's, that's located at one, uh, 130 North Main. 130, okay, yeah. Yeah, and it's at 33 um, senior housing. And the yep. town was in favor. So Mr. Zgonik, I, I wonder if you're talking about the 150 units, um, 116 flats. That was a huge, huge, they opposed that in the town for a long time. And then at the last minute that, you know, the septic was all set and then they wanted to hook the sewer uh, later on and all. But that was, uh, that's the one that's almost across from Bob's Barbecue? Correct. Yeah, that, that, that's the one over by uh, Off Country Road, right? Yes. Yeah, they've, they've got one giant uh, septic system there. And, they're, and fortunately, our Board of Health uh, did not recommend those. There were one development that was going in on Moody Bridge Road. They didn't want to hook up to the sewer. And uh, I don't know if you remember that one, but. Uh, yeah, I think it was the Conservation Commission because Alexander wanted us to put in, wanted us to change the bylaw to prohibit uh, shared septic. Ah, that's. There you go. Huh? That's what I was looking for. So. Um, Let's see what's the uh so the first page is from the last complete year um so you see we're we're pretty much um tied with amherst on everything except rooms room occupancy um where we outshine them and, and we're decently you know, competitive with Northampton on everything except marijuana. So it's what's going to be interesting going forward is whether uh, having a second marijuana site in Hadley will um, dilute the market or double it. This is what we got uh, for the first quarter this year. So uh, Northampton may be on the other uh, end of the scale uh, in that they've got Proposed 14. I don't know how 14 will survive in Northampton. And Amherst has something like six that are open and eight that are approved, or two more that are approved but not yet open. Yeah. So and they're, they're not doing a lot better than we are for having you know, three or four times the um, uh, sites that we have. Yeah, well, it's gonna. It, this whole cannabis thing and the dispensary is going to come down to survival of the fittest. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's probably more uh, cannabis stores in, North, in Amherst than there will be than there is package stores. Yes, there are. So another wild card that's going to be out there is the um, delivery services, the, uh, the Uber Eats of uh, edibles. Um, because the, the one that's operational around here that I'm aware of is based in East Hampton. But that means that the excise goes to East Hampton regardless of where the product is delivered because that's where it was quote unquote sold. So we'll see if that's an impact. I haven't tried to research the, uh, uh, how East Hampton is doing on this stuff, but uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're not, uh, you know, you look at the meals tax and the room occupancy tax and compare it to uh, Hatfield and Sunderland. And um, yeah, we're, we're orders of magnitude more intense than they are in restaurants and hotels. Oh, wow, significant. Well, so I mean, it's, it's the same thing. Look, I mean, Amherst has what? A couple of hotels and hotels. Look at what Hadley has. There's, there's, there is a world of difference. Yep. 
That, that meals tax for Hadley's Hatfield seems low. I mean, they've got they've got a couple pretty good restaurants in town, Fish Tales, and they've got the other one on uh, Elm Street coming into town or whatever street that is. They got a few along five and ten. If that's so the case, those restaurants aren't doing too well. So, so this was July, August, and September on this page oh. of 22. So it covers the summer, and um, I don't know what to say. If you go back up here, you can see it by quarters. Um, and we're pretty steady across the quarters. Um, there's some variation. Um But that was one of the things that sort of came up at town meeting that uh, got a, uh, a nice shout out from Brian West, that, uh, how everyone should be thanking the planning board for making the town as healthy as it uh, and uh, economically sound as it is. And... Um, yeah, this goes to goes to show that you know, we need to we do need to spend some of that money to we we have to, we have to police and uh, ambulance and maintain roads for a much larger community. But, but that, that that's a real cash cow for us on Route Nine. But they don't send kids to school. That's that's the that's two thirds of our budget. Yep. So, you know, we, for, for those three sources in the last fiscal year, we cleared almost 1.5 million. Um, so, it, so it's $200 per person, huh? Like we got about 5,000 people in town? Yeah, yeah 5,000, some change, maybe 5,400. Uh, Linda has a, a better version of this that has uh, the actual town budgets uh, under the, the heading. You know, how much is Hatfield's total budget, Hadley's total budget, and so on. Um, so I'll get off that soapbox now. But uh, we were really, we just didn't have any idea what the contribution was from these sources. So we started looking at the, uh, the state database and... Uh, Wow, well, well, what's that feel? Wow, wow. So it's, um, it was illuminating. Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, my old line that I use all the time is that development follow rivers, then it follow railroads. Now it follows sewer lines. And once that sewer line went in, that was the, uh, the ability to have that Route 9 corridor. Uh, whereas Hatfield fought for years about where the sewer line was going to go in. They, to me, they had a perfect extension of King Street in Northampton, but uh, they never had a sewer line there, so. Yeah, Mike. Mike, Mr. Quinlan, oh, go ahead, let me come. That's the same as Southampton. They, that sewer going down uh, College Highway, you know, they have Westfield, East Hampton on each side, and they had plans years ago and, and didn't go through with it. and. They could have had a Route 9 there as well, but they had the Route well, 9. But, you know, the sewer line in uh, Hatfield would have led to Greenfield Community College. Our, our sewer line led to UMass. It's a little different. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, actually, the sewer plant, I, you know, I used to kid my relatives over there that uh, Hatfield would only be happy if the sewer plant, sewage treatment plant, were located in Hadley. Well, where it is now, that last section is really Hadley. That's because the river changed course. But my cousin George got two tax bills, one from Hadley and one from Hatfield. So I, I think they finally resolved that one. Jim, did you get a chance to go out on North Maple and look at the signs? I did. Now, the one, there, there's actually... There's the uh, Venture Way sign on each driveway that welcomes them. And then there's two other signs. One is a UMass sign at both entrances that lists different kind of UMass activities or studies, I guess is a better way to say it. And the other one is, what is it called, VMC or VCM? 
it's the two that say 200 um, Venture Way Cooperative. Um, VWC? It must be, yeah. But it, they have their actual, the number 200 on them. Yeah. Um, I was, so, it was late Friday afternoon and I was in the, in our dump truck. I was done for work and I saw, so I saw him putting them in and I, I went right over this week to just, you know, let him know that I figured it wasn't appropriate to stop and <laughs> truck yeah, and the, uh, I mean, they're not on their property. And like we talked at uh, the meeting when Didi brought it up that those signs are not on their property. They're not legal. Is that the, uh, the, the pharmacy, quote unquote, they make some herbal medicine on Venture Way? Or is that the one where they were having a kind of a workout place? Uh, or well, I, think, I think that's the research spot because UMass has 100 and 400. So the 200 one must be the one that's on the east side going down toward the woods, right? Yes, the newest one. Yeah. Was it, that was part of the uh, uh, the educational collaborative or testing agency? What was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They sold I, one building to uh, UMass. So that came off the tax roll. So Yeah. So I, I was getting uh, a warning that my internet was unstable. So I've turned off my video. That seems to help. Um, Yeah, yeah, but definitely, I saw those signs. I, they're not on the property. There are two of them at each, each entrance. Um, yeah, I just yeah, don't think they belong there. Yeah, I, you know, I, I fully agree. I mean, do we want to make a motion for the uh, zoning enforcement officer to, to enforce it? How, what do you want to do with that? Well, that'd be the appropriate way to do it. So rather... I, I, I'd say maybe not do a motion. Um, you know, I think... Uh, I suppose we could if, if you want us to. Uh, I'm a little reluctant to do a motion without having any input from the people who put up the sign. Uh, she was very cooperative. She, 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 she wasn't there when I stopped. She called me right away when I was back in the office and she said, you want me to take them right down? And I said, let's, let's do some research. I just want to know that, you know, permit was required and your, you know, your blessing need to go in front of you. So she, however you want to work it, She'll be yep. very cooperative. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I guess it, it's also, you know, we can make the motion to uh, for their removal and we can always reconsider. What would you like, Mr. Quinlan? Would you like I, a motion? I, I believe she's going to, if, if you want to just hear her, she just was going to uh, put the uh, send an email so you had prior notice and come to the next meeting. But okay. It's up to you. Let's okay. leave it like that then. All right. That sounds fine. I have nothing else. I have not. Um, no, we approved our pay for the fourth quarter already. I have no other invoices. Um, no. I have nothing. Anybody else have anything? I have nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. If not, Pick me um, up, motion to adjourn. So moved. And I'll second it. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. And you got to pick me up, Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Eat, donate. Hey.